Ah, you have returned. Or perhaps it is your first time here. Welcome to Lonely Law Love, where we give love to the law that we run past each and every day in the games that we play. This time things are a little bit different. A bit spoopy, if you will. In honour of the spoopiest season of the year. Happy autumn, everybody. Now sit back, relax, get comfortable, grab a cosy blanket and be ready for a horror story from the land of Tamriel. Today we find ourselves in Olive's Brewery, the Witches' Festival area. This is not where we find this book, but a fitting location for what we are about to read. I present to you Picnic at Pelin, a horror story. Come on, Phelan, I said. It'll be fun. I, I don't know, Jax, Phelan replied, her gamin's face betraying embarrassment. Unusual for her. I just don't think it doesn't sound like a good idea to me. What? Going for a picnic? It's Sovereignty Day, celebrating High Rock's independence from the First Empire. Everybody goes for a picnic on Sovereignty Day. Yes, but not to Palin Graveyard, and the weather isn't looking very good for a picnic. It's so gloomy, she shivered. Not a worry, I said, leading the way past, through the rout iron fences, into the great cemetery. We'll have a roof over our heads. We're going to eat inside this old mausoleum here. What? Phelan said. But, but this crypt is... The, but this is the crypt of... Of your namesake, Baroness Phelan Guma, Who commanded the troops of Bancori on Sovereignty Day? The very same. I smiled, bowed and waved her into the dark mausoleum. Aileen looked inside and gulped. All right, Jax, you can't scare me. And hunching her head a bit into her shoulders, she ducked into the Baroness's last resting place. I followed, unfolding the picnic blanket with a flourish. Here we are. No need to sit directly in the clammy, strangely stained flagstones, the dark and dismal charnel vault. Comfort and elegance are my watchwords. Very funny, Jax. She smiled gamely and folded her legs beneath her as I put the picnic basket in the centre of the blanket. So, what did you bring? Chef Antoine's deluxe picnic correlation from the Anchor's Point Inn. A brace of rock pigeons grilled and deboned with combwork chutney, balloon pudding, and a jug of syllabub, unless f- for pigeon. Less a voice whispered from the back of the vault. Ah, uh, uh, an echo by Mara. D- did you hear that, Pauline? Came the whisper, louder this time. I, I certainly heard that, Phelan said, leaping up. Jax, what kind of trick are you playing here? Hey, listen, Legion, where? Said the voice quite distinctly. And before our widening eyes, a blue phantasm came drifting up from a steep and narrow stairwell. With a shriek, Phelan backed up against the far wall and froze, seemingly paralysed. I felt cold stones at my own back and realised I had done the same. The translucent blue phantasm, clad in armour of antique design, drifted between us. 
halted at the entrance and turned. This is the day, isn't it? She demanded in hollow tones. The day of the attack. Yes, Countess, I said, surprised at my ability to speak. Right day, but wrong century. What? She flew at me, spectral hands raised like claws. Somehow, I shrank even further into the wall. What? Not again! Th that's right, Faelene piped up. Wrong century, wrong year. Go back to sleep, Grandmother. Wrong year, the spectre said slowly. Back to sleep. And to our immense relief, the Countess's ghost began drifting back down the stairs, fading as it went. Gales of Kynareth, Phelan said, sinking to the floor. I need a drink. You? Oh, yes. At least one, I said, as she poured the syllabub. What's taking so long? My hands are shaking. Here. I drained the milk and cider to the dregs and passed the mug back for more. Then I took a deep breath and began. Faileen, I'm really, really sorry. I never thought... Don't worry about it. She said, here, have some more. Think what a great story it'll make back at Anchor's Point. You're not angry? Really? No, Jax, not angry. Well then, let me carve the... Huh? <laughs> That's funny. As I reached for the plate of pigeons, I felt a wave of cold pass over my body. And my hand fell short. By our okay. What? I tried to stand, but as far as my knees and I fell over onto the blanket. Eileen, something's uh, something's wrong. <laughs> it's nothing, dearest, she said, smiling. Sweetly, I just drugged your silk bob with a paralyzing potion. D drugged? I mumbled. Why? Because there's this really exclusive club I want to join. Namira's forgotten. But to be admitted, you have to consume human flesh. It's quite Thrilling, Jax. She threw a slender, razor-sharp blade <laughs> from her bodice. Now, let's see. Where shall I begin? Thank you for attending another Lonely Law Love. It's been fabulous having you listen along. Remember, if you're a part of the School of Tear Sorcery, then you get access to these before everybody else. And you can even request books in the future. So if you have an idea of something you'd like me to read, pop on over to the School of Tea Sorcery, where you can learn how to make magic with tea, man tea to be exact. And you can request whatever you fancy. Stay saucy, you saucy sausages. Goodbye.